Hello friends, it is Andrew from MAO Magic and I have the newly released Dexcom G5 Mobile CGM. They're building this as the first and only completely mobile CGM. The big difference between this and the last generation G4 is that you can essentially use the G5 completely independent of a receiver. That was a big hang up for a lot of people having to carry that receiver around. Now with this new G5 sensor, everything is built in. Now it just uses Bluetooth and goes straight to your phone. So if we look at the sensor itself, you first may notice it's a little bit chunkier than the last generation G4. Um, other than that though, it's pretty much the same size. It still uses the same sets that we had last time. If we compare them side by side, you can basically see it's just a bit taller. And while it does have that space, that does not guarantee a longer life. It's actually only a three month lifespan for the G5 sensor compared to the G4. So it does have that extra room for more bat battery in that Bluetooth technology, but that does not mean it lasts longer. If we look at how the G4 worked, the transmitter would then send a proprietary RF signal to the receiver. Then that receiver would send a signal over to the phone. Now that phone would you be using Bluetooth to connect to the receiver and that would be shared using that follow application for anyone else. But on the G5 sensor, you can completely get rid of that receiver if you want or keep it around. You can use one or both and that G5 transmitter just sends that Bluetooth signal using Bluetooth LE low energy to the phone or to the receiver. You can use one or both and the receiver can still override the phone. So now we used to use this share application. So if you connected your receiver to your smartphone and wanted to share with other people or wanted to view it on your phone or smartwatch, your blood sugar that is, we don't need that any longer. So you can completely remove that share app from your phone. And instead, we're going to use the new Dexcom G5 mobile application. You have a simple little setup process here to walk you through some of the features of the G5 sensor and then has you sign in with your Dexcom account. Now, when we're setting up this application, it has you walk through this little like getting started guide. So first you accept the terms and services. You're going to be notified that you should always check with your meter, obviously, before acting on any of those blood sugars. You should make sure you don't take anything like Tylenol that can artificially change your blood sugar. Stay away from MRIs. You know how to use alerts on your new phone instead of on the receiver. We're going to choose our low glucose alert, so such as 70. We're going to set our high glucose alert. For me, I'm going to put 200. And then we're going to be notified about accepting those push notifications. We're going to be notified, hey, if you have your phone on silent, you are not going to get those low alerts, so do not use Do Not Disturb. Make sure your volume is up. All this stuff, especially for overnight. So if you have the sensor on there before your receiver would wake you up, now you kind of have to use your phone. So if your phone is on mute, you're not going to get those warnings. Now we're actually going to pair our transmitter with our phone. So first, it's going to make sure you have Bluetooth enabled on your phone. So I understand I need Bluetooth. It'll say, do you have Bluetooth on? It'll check and make sure. Now we're simply going to scan the barcode, which is going to be basically our pairing information to connect our receiver to our phone. So it'll access the camera and you can scan the barcode. It'll say, okay, you can watch a little sick getting started video on applying those sets or applications. And if you want to learn how to do that, there's plenty of other videos. You can see my video on the G4. Uh, and now we just have to wait for that two minute window. So it's going to take about 30 minutes or less. It took me only a couple minutes uh, to find my sensor. Once it's there, you're going to say, okay, I need this two minute warm up. It's going to have to go for two hours, the same as the G4 took for it to get that initial calibration. You're then going to enter your blood sugar twice to calibrate it for the first time. So while we wait, let's check out the other features of the application. We're going to swipe open that left menu on the left-hand side. We're going to check out alerts. You can customize all of these alerts just like you could on the receivers. Uh, you can set the rise rate alerts as well as the low, the fall rate alerts. And you can customize these to any points that you'd like as well as any rate at which you would like. If you look at settings, you can see the transmitter device info. You can change the graph height, so the Y axis. So I changed mine down to 300. I'm hoping I'm not going really above that. You can enable the health kit access. So it's going to write all of your settings over to the health application. Now, previously I mentioned we got rid of that share app. We don't need it any longer. Now on the top right hand corner, there's a new share icon. This will walk you through everything we could do with share before. So it'll simply upload all of your settings into the Dexcom cloud and then any follower will be able to see all of your glucose settings on their devices. Now we're going to say two hours has passed. Our sensor is now calibrated. Um, we've gone ahead and put all those in there and we have some data in our application now. So you can see I was dipping a little bit low, came up a little bit and I'm hovering around in the high 70s. So if you ever need to calibrate your sensor, which you're going to need to do every 12 hours or two the first time, you can hit that uh, meter icon on that top left-hand corner. You have that little activity icon on that top right-hand side where you can enter carbs. You can log your food. You can log any insulin because this does not talk to your pump, especially if you have a Medtronic. You can add any exercise. It does not pull any of your exercise data from the health app. And then you can add how you're feeling. And you can also adjust the time for any of these entries. All this will then show up on your graph. 
Unfortunately, you cannot scrub along the graph until you switch it into landscape mode. And here you can start to see, okay, you can see right there when you scrub across, okay, I had some food and I took some insulin. And you can see all that as well as when you were low and the little icon on top shows you all of those pieces of information. Now, there are a few different problems with the app, such as the fact it does not scale for the iPhone 6 Plus, so it is kind of blurry, which kind of bugs me. You also lose the Apple Watch app. If we look at the health app, this is writing into here just like it was before using the share application. It'll simply write all those in here, which allows you to view all of your information in better apps, uh, such as the Diabetes Kit and all the other ones out there on the App Store that allow you to take this information from HealthKit and then display it in a meaningful way. Basically, when you view it here in the health app itself, it's basically just a lot of raw data. You're looking at all, all the numbers, and they're about five minutes apart. This does sync on a three-hour delay, so when you first put this in, you're not going to see anything in the health app for about three hours. If we look at the pros and cons, pros, it has the best-in-class accuracy, and that is still true. You have no need to charge your device, especially since you don't have the receiver to carry on. There's nothing to charge any longer. It has that share functionality, so others can follow you, especially great for children has alerts on the phone now, so you don't actually have to use that receiver. You can see it right on your phone, which is what people have a lot of times anyway. has trends. You can see where you're trending up, down, or staying the same. has a really good range, which is just a standard Bluetooth range. It is waterproof, so you can shower, swim, all the like. It has a great wear time. You can wear it about seven days, which is much better than the competition. And lastly, the best pro is there is no receiver necessary. Uh, this is the, the main reason that I would ever upgrade to the Dexcom G5. There is one other thing to note. You can use your old receiver. There is just a software update available that will allow you to use your Dexcom G4 receiver with Share with the new Dexcom G5 if you still would like one. Now let's check out the flip side. We're going to take a look at the cons of the Dexcom G5. It can miss readings. Bluetooth's not 100%, so it can miss them, and it will leave little holes in your graph, and it's not going to sync those data points back like it did before. There seems to be no persistent memory on the transmitter. You have to still have two sets at once. So if you have a pump, you have a pump set as well as that transmitter set. Just so, so just two things you have to have on, which many people don't like. There's still no auto insertion. Some people like the current way to insert sets. A lot of people do not. That is one pro of like the Medtronic end light sensor. It just has a little button, press it, boom, on, done. So for those that like this one, it's not a con. For the ones who don't like it, still a con. It doesn't talk to your pump. So especially those who have that Medtronic pump, it is not talking to there. It does have lost functionality. You are losing that Apple Watch support as well as the Night Scout support, at least right now. Both those can come in the future, but those are two huge problems for people. Why would you not be able to see a custom complication on your Apple Watch app? And most of this is coming in the future with that uh, WatchOS 2 application promised in the end of this year, beginning of next. Life is half the size of of the G4. So the G4 sensor would last you six months before you had to buy a new one. The G5 only lasts three, probably because of that extra Bluetooth functionality. And lastly, it is larger than the G4, so an extra size. Some people aren't going to like that. A lot easier to knock off, uh, be it by seatbelts or just going about your daily life. If you have any questions about the Dexcom G5, throw it up in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so I can keep these videos coming. Other than that, I will see you guys all next time.